everyone! Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Molly, and today I'm going to be reviewing and reacting to Season 1, Episode 6 of The Expanse. Alright, so a couple quick things to get through before I start talking about the episode itself. The first thing is that I've had a lot of comments from people um, who have been saying things like they would like to watch the full reactions um, to entire episodes, especially because I've mentioned how I have difficulty cutting down some of these episodes since they're so packed with content. Um, so with that in mind and coupled with the fact that I've also had comments from people proposing other types of videos they'd like to see, other types of content, um, or additional reaction series, things along those lines, I've decided to start a Patreon. Um, Actually, by the time that this video is up, the Patreon page will most likely be up and running. Um, so you might have already heard about this, but just in case you didn't, I wanted to let everybody know that I am starting a Patreon page. I don't expect anyone to contribute anything, just to be clear. I would be very grateful and appreciative if you wanted to, and if you are somebody who is just really, really into the experience and curious about seeing my reactions to entire episodes, please do head on over to my Patreon page, check it out, see what you think about the various rewards and if it's worth it. And if it is, um, please do contribute and I would appreciate it very much. But if you're happy with what we currently have going, that's all right too. Again, I'm just grateful for everybody sticking around and watching these videos and chatting with me online. It's a lot of fun. So no expectations, but it is there if that's something that you're interested in. All right. So I'll put a link down um, in the description below this video and then you'll be able to check out that page um, as soon as it's, it's up and running. I've already got the, uh, the like bones of it in place and I'm gonna try and go in and fill in all of the information over the next couple of days. So it should probably be there and going by the time this video is actually published um, on my YouTube channel. All right, so I'll put the link down below. Check it out if you want. If you're not interested, no problem, no hard feelings, okay? So there's that I just wanted to mention. And then um, second, I wanted to quickly also mention that I'm going to be starting a couple additional series in the very near future. Now that I've finished True Detective Season 1, I will be starting True Detective Season 3. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about it, a lot of people have suggested that, so those episodes will be coming soon as well. And then the series that won the poll that you guys participated in was Hannibal. So. Hannibal reactions coming soon too. So a lot of things coming up, a lot of things to look forward to. Um, I just wanted to fill you guys in, let everyone know what's going on. All right, so back to the expanse. Okay, so I'm going into episode six today. Um, plot wise, a couple things where we left off fairly big cliffhangers with Miller being just grabbed at the end there by someone who we're not fully sure who it is that's grabbed him. Um, we we can make guesses, you know, I would guess that it's probably somebody associated with Anderson Dawes. Um, seems like the most likely culprit of someone who would want to grab him for some reason. Um, and one thing on that um, that I wanted to ask you guys if you had any insight about is the Belter hairstyles, because you see when he's being grabbed, there was one um, young woman who had a very similar hairstyle to Naomi with the shaved sides on, on her head and then hair in the middle that's kind of um, more vibrant. And even Miller, you know, he has one side of his head shaved, which I don't know if it's supposed to be more symbolic again of the, the idea that he's kind of a belter. He knows he is, but he doesn't want to associate with them totally, so he tries to hide it. I'm not sure. Um, but I was just curious if there was something in particular about that hairstyle. You know, we've seen it on other belters as well, that, that, that if there's a particular reason they do that is a, a cultural thing. So if you have any insight into that, I would definitely be interested in hearing. I'm just curious. Um, but anyway, so Miller's been grabbed by some people. We don't know what's going to happen to him or who's taken him, but we'll hopefully find out in this episode. 
And then we have Holden and the crew headed in to meet with Fred Johnson and we'll find out if that was a good idea or a bad idea after we see what it is that he wants, what he's doing here. Um, and then I just wanted to also mention, because I talked about this in my previous video, I have come prepared with a little notebook this time, so I'm gonna try to take some notes throughout the course of the episode. Um, just jot down a couple things to kind of organize some of my thoughts so that my summation section near the end maybe will be a little bit um, clearer than it has been in some of the other videos. And we'll see how it goes. I'll try my best to not be spending too much time looking down at this, so maybe we'll have some shorthand and that might actually backfire when I'm trying to decide for my notes later, but we'll see. It's an experiment, so we'll see if this is something that I want to keep doing going forward after this episode. All right, so with all of that being said, let's get into episode six. I only see two of you. That tells me that you're trying hard to hide your numbers. Mm -hmm. Tactically, if there were more as a show of force, you would have brought them out. I'm guessing there are two to four people left on your ship, and I'm confident that there's no Martian Navy on board. If they were, they'd be out here speaking with me now. You walked off that ship because you're in charge. Mm -hmm. At least you think you are. If I wanted to hurt you, I would broadcast your transponder and your position to the entire system. Come That's a here. good point. It was your only option, but it was also your best option. Now, you want to continue to play games? Or shall we talk about how to help each other? I think so. Oh, here we go. I'm Lita. My brother, Kaipo. Your parents must be proud. Oh, hair. I'm taking control of the Tachi right now. What the hell you want? Right there! Those guns can't help you anymore. You sure you want to find out if that's true? Put the gun down. Might want to down a poncho. Is he missing the point or is he getting it perfectly? Very much, he thinks of them as, as his people now, very much. What is? Mm -hmm. I love this drug skull in the camp. Amos. I'm glad we cleared this up. I knew. Holden did the right thing. He did. Good reason to be? I don't know. 
That was helpful, Alex. Good contribution. She should have said something. She asked me to help her. She knew what she was doing. She was willing to make a sacrifice for us. It was more than you. She trusted you. She put herself in your hands. She couldn't see the blood on her. Just like your sister. Is that right? Wasn't she like 15 when you let her die out of a belt? When she became too ill, even to travel, I had three other sisters to think about. Our family was starving. So you killed her. And that makes me a monster. There was no script to bury her, so I laid her to rest. Hard to say. Do you know is it's possible to cry so hard that your tears turn to blood? Yeah. And living with this pain, I came to realize that I have millions of brothers and sisters in. Hard time deciding what to think about him. Just tell me if she's alive. If she was here right now, she'd spit in your face. You are everything she despised. A belter who preys on his own kind. You may as well spit in his face right then. Die as you lived. Wait. Die. I thought it was going to be her. I think she's telling the truth. So what's next from there? It, We're gonna go. Okay. It feels like something's going on here, honestly. I mean, if you know what I mean. No, I love it. Do your best. Your worst memories. Do your biggest illusions. Mm. She's right. That's oh. I don't know if this is how you cope with that either. What is this? I'll spare us the speech. The ship's ready. Are you? Hmm. I guess we lost Amos. Oh, he'll be here in a sec. Okay. I guess I'll uh, put on some coffee. Like I'm an old war bomber? <laughs> okay, I'm like in love with that. Scientists on Phoebe discover something, something big. From the tip of the balance of power, the UPA gets 
when the that thing that eats people. To steal it. The mission goes south. Which leaves someone with a lot of power, a lot of resources, can do anything to be quiet, including. We still don't know who. Starting war. <clears throat> Impressive, Miller. I'm proud of him. Detective Miller's case files and cancel all his clearances. What are you doing? You're fired. Dawes. He bought you. Get out. In his pocket. Wait, my so old police force. Out of your way. Security. All right, that was episode six. So I have a good amount of stuff jotted down here, notes-wise, um, to go over. So let's just kind of start with the beginning. Let's start from the beginning and work down, shall we? All right, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit was Fred Johnson. So we got quite a bit of information about him and what he wants, or at least what he claims to want, from this episode. Um, so we see his conversation with Holden at the beginning, and he wants, you know, the information that he has. He wants him to basically testify to what he's seen and experienced. And he wants him to serve as a conduit for Fred Johnson himself to kind of get into the table, so to speak, the political table with Earth and Mars to be taken seriously and for the belt to be taken seriously um, as a political actor and mover. And then he also ends up wanting um, Holden to go and try to recover this Lionel Polanski person, um, which... I'm assuming that's probably going to end up being Julie, right? I mean, that, that will be Julie, as, as I don't imagine that there's anybody else. Um, but point being, we have a bit of background into what it is that Johnson is doing. And to some respects, Naomi was indeed right, that he's helping them, but not really out of the goodness of his heart, so to speak. He has obvious political motives, things that drive him, that she would perhaps say make him um, fanatical in the same way that she called the Martians fanatical, and that they have this strong belief um, in what they are doing, and they're willing to go to seemingly whatever length, be it their death or the deaths of others, in order to achieve those goals. Um, so in some respects, it seems like she was she was right. But at the same time, even with the conversation between Fred and Holden um, when they're first coming face to face and they're deciding what to do next, um, it's pretty clear that Fred was right and that Holden was right as well. There really wasn't anywhere else that they could possibly go at that point in time. So. They made the choice that they made. It was a practical decision, but at the same time, there are consequences that Naomi was aware of, and now that they they all pretty much are, are involved in this and have to deal with. Um, though I have to say, it doesn't seem that it turned out that particularly terrible for them overall at this point. Um, Fred helped them out. They're basically continuing to investigate with his resources and with the new information that he's given to them, which is, you can tell what Holden wanted anyway, because he wants to know what happened to the Canterbury, why it happened, who's responsible, and get some sort of justice for it. And his testimony and the crew's testimony, yeah, that's great if you can actually find a culprit and figure out the rest of the pieces, which they don't quite have yet. So Fred's influence, his involvement gives them more of an opportunity to continue down this path. So. That, I, I mean, is it what they want and seems like a positive in some ways, in some respects. So even though, you know, he might be using them, they're using him for their own purposes too. And it seems to be working out okay for them so far. So we'll see what happens with that. But overall, I, I think going to Fred Johnson, um, the Tycho station, seems like it was the right choice, the choice, or the, it was the only choice, it was the choice they had to make. It was good that they made that decision. Um, so then I also was interested in, with Fred Johnson, he had this conversation 
with Amos when Amos and um and Holden are first kind of arriving there and they're all pointing their guns at each other and everything's extremely tense and you see Fred Johnson saying that he's known a lot of of guys like him which Amos seems to write off as ridiculous and then Fred Johnson says all these things about you know wounded boys and and like um getting into this position and um you, I, I can't really tell, like, I was watching Amos's reaction and it seemed like he maybe possibly sort of agreed with that assessment. Um, so I don't know if that's going to tie into maybe his backstory and how he became who he became. Um, but it did seem like maybe Fred Johnson does have a little bit of insight, but again, we'll see. We'll see how much that turns out to be the case. Um, but also that... I, on the subject of Amos, uh, I also just wanted to briefly touch upon the conversation between the crew of the, the Rosinante, I like it, um, after Holden admits that he is the one that logged the distress call, so basically he's responsible for them being out there. And Amos is extremely displeased, but he becomes even more impacted or affected when he finds out that Naomi also knew and didn't tell him. Um, so he then ends up saying, you know, why didn't you tell me? And she's just kind of staring at him and he seems to come to this realization that, oh, you were afraid of me. You didn't tell me because you were afraid how I would react or what maybe what I would do to Holden. And, and he seemed pretty upset. It, it, to me anyway, um, it seemed like that was a hard realization for him to think that Naomi, this person that he maybe feels somewhat closer to than others. Um, I mean, not maybe, he definitely feels closer to her, he has more trust in her, he listens to her, um, that she would be too afraid of him to tell him the reality of the situation because she couldn't tell what he would do or she imagines that he would do something terrible automatically. So it seemed to have a bit of an impact on him, but simultaneously, like I was saying, it's not really as though she was wrong, right? Because we have seen in a lot of situations where he's very quick to jump to, to force, and if he thinks that that is the right thing to do in the moment. So, I don't know. But I thought that that was interesting, again, to see the continuation of the development of both his character and his relationship with Naomi overall. So then, some other things about this episode that I briefly wanted to touch upon. One was, we got more information on Anderson Dawes, and I continue to be uncertain what I really feel about him. Um, the more that I hear from him, the more I kind of bounce back and forth in, in wondering, you know, is Miller right in his kind of cynical viewpoint of him in thinking that maybe underneath all of this posturing and speech that Dawes is just somebody that's out for power and influence money and that, you know, he doesn't care as much about his supposed idealism and his idealistic goals as he lets on and that maybe it's more selfish. And, and there's a part of me that, that wants to fall into that cynical belief, um, but at the same time, you hear the things that he's saying and it does seem as though he believes them, that he genuinely believes in the causes that they're fighting for and that the way that he's doing it is the right way to fight for it, perhaps. Um, and you go into the story of, of his sister. And again, it's something that, I mean, that's a horrifying story. It's, it's horrific that you would kill a family member, but Again, he's talking about judgment um, or, or about the reasons that he did it, and that's not something that I personally feel like I can judge because I've not been in a situation of such sort of like dire poverty where you're thinking that you have to choose maybe between the survival of one family member and excuse me, survival of all of your family members. Um, but that's, again, that's if he's being honest. Because if, did he, did he really feel like the rest of his family members would all die otherwise, his other sisters, or was it more about him? So I, I'm, I'm not sure. I keep going back and forth on him. Um, but I also wanted to relate that to, to the guy, um, Uncle Mateo, I have written down Mateo, um, whose nephew seems to, I mean, he's the kid that Miller saw that was stealing the, stealing the water, right, on series. Um, and so we see everything that happened there, 
And I'm kind of curious if we should be tying that back into Dawes's story in reference to the nephew, if the idea is that these kind of impactful formative moments when you're young and you see yourself and the people you care about being taken advantage of so horrifically and then you end up losing someone that you care about um, even to death in a terrible way if this is kind of um, to show us the sort of things that maybe lead people to be more radical. Um, so I'll be interested to see where his story continues. I assume that it's going to because I, I wouldn't imagine that they would just have him in that one episode stealing water and then showing up here again for no reason whatsoever. So I'd be interested to see how that progresses. Um, and then some of the other things that I was curious about, there was, there was a couple little details that I want to ask at the end, but one thing that I thought was interesting is that it kept coming back to, at least in my opinion, throughout this episode, um, the idea of maybe kind of romantic relationships or kind of romantic tension. So in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my opinion, you see a lot of flirtation, chemistry going on with Naomi and Holden, and they're getting to know each other very well. And like, in my opinion, also, she's probably the catalyst behind all of the crew ending up going together at the end as opposed to just Holden. So it was interesting for me to watch that and then compare it to what we see happening both with Miller and, um, and Muss. And I'm kind of curious if they have a past romantic relationship because you kind of get, get that sort of sense from a variety. But you see, like, she seems to genuinely care about him. She, he's, she's looking out to try and protect him. She's following him around on these things. Um, and she ends up killing those people in order to save his life, thankfully. And then you see the way that she's acting in the aftermath of her trauma. And so on the one hand, you can think, well, maybe, you know, she's just been through a traumatic situation, so she's reaching out for comfort, and that could possibly be true. But she also does seem to genuinely care about him. And he, you know, probably cares about her in some respects, but doesn't really seem that particularly interested, and he's pushing her away quite a lot. Um, which is fascinating because she's this real person here in front of him who he knows who does care about him, but according to... Dawes and and even he himself he's apparently in love with Julie who is someone that he's never met and I, I think you could argue that he probably has gotten to know her in some ways from um basically studying her life tracking her down trying to follow her footsteps and I could see that he had like a soft spot for her um some respect for her her kind of rebellious nature and the choices that she's she's made but then it, I mean, at the same time, you hear him talking to various people about how they've taken advantage of her, they should have protected her, and so all of that does make a lot more sense if it's coming from the perspective that maybe he's feeling as though he's fallen in love with this idea of this person who he hasn't met. Um, so then, of course, when Dawes says to him that she would, she would spit in your face, you're everything that she despised and that she would go against, that seemed like a incredibly harsh blow for Miller, but I'm wondering what sort of impact those words will have on him because pretty much nothing else that Dawes has said has really seemed to cut him in a direct way. I'm sure it's things he's all heard before and also, you know, as I said, he has a cynical perspective on Dawes, so he probably was trying to just brush it off, but then when he says that about Julie, and I mean, it's probably true based on everything that we've seen and know about her so far, I imagine that is most likely going to have more of an impact on Miller than what he's heard so far. And so that just brings me closer to the end. We have Miller finally putting all the pieces together. You know, he succeeded in doing this and then he gets fired. So we'll see, you know, what's he going to do going forward? He's obviously not going to drop it if he's in love with Julie and he lost his job over this and his entire life seems to have been his job. So I'm certain that he's not going to just drop this. And then with the other little main character group, we have them all going out together to try and finish this mission for Fred on his behalf. Um, and so for that, I just mostly wanted to comment on the fact that for me, this, the end of this episode, seemed to be a representation of them really coming together as a crew of choice for the first time because none of them had to go with Holden. They all had things set for them. 
every previous thing that's happened to them so far, they were all sticking together to try to survive. And after this moment, it seems like this is when they decided we want to stay together, to work together, to be an actual team. So I thought that that was, you could feel it too in their last interactions at the end of the episode, that the kind of uplifting nature of it, which was nice. So I liked that. And then of course, and then of course, the little things I just wanted to throw in was the the pinup girl, Rocinante, on the ship. I absolutely loved that. I thought that was a great touch. And then I want to talk a little bit more in the future and want to know more about the idea of the neck tattoos and what Dawes was saying about um, like some sort of neck restraint in the past. So I want to know more about kind of how that ties together. I think that could be potentially interesting. So. All right, well, that was a lot that I went through and covered. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the taking of the notes. I feel like I wasn't as fully absorbed in the emotional state of the episode as I have been previously because I was doing this. But at the same time, I did get a lot of information, so I don't know. You guys let me know what you think, what you think. Um, and other than that, if you think I missed anything, if you want to keep chatting about this episode, questions, comments, leave them down below. And I'll say thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.